Welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. It has been a minute since I've seen you guys. Um, October, I believe, was the last time I posted any sort of art video. And yesterday, I started an entire video and started painting, and my painting turned to crap. So, I did not post it. But when I got in here, my studio looked like a bomb. I mean, I'll, I'll insert a little clip here so you can see just how bad it looked. Yeah, so here it is. It is a mess. I've got water in my cups from the last time I was here. And of course, my plumbing is shut off for winter. So it is a mess in here. It is like a bomb. I've got boxes and bags everywhere because I took them with me into my house thinking, oh, I'll be painting so much after surgery. Well, let me tell you, I did not paint. And then I decided after everything, I was just going to go ahead and clean. So that's what I did. And um, I'm still not done. I've got a lot more to do, but I'm getting... I cleaned off my table so I could actually paint something. I cleaned this off. It was set, it was piled high with stuff. And I still have too much stuff on here. I'd like to get rid of some of it, but I don't know where I can put it. Over here was a mess. My couch was a mess. It, everything was piled up. I just brought my small harp in today because I thought I'd do a little practicing in here with that and my flute. But and I cleaned over here. So everything is much better than it was. So now, and I even watered my poor little plants that look like death when I came in. Um, so anyhow, and I don't have any plumbing because of winter, so I'm using those jugs there as my water source. And I can just fill them when I need to. So here I am. I am back. And I'm going to do just a simple painting today, something that's simple for me, simple for you, those of you who've been wanting a tutorial I will go ahead and get that going for you it's just a simple winter scene with the winter moon and um, yeah so let's get started and I will chat along the way and tell you what's been going on with me okay so the first thing that you'll need to do is find something to make a big moon on your paper I'm just using a roll of artist tape and using the inner circle as my moon and this pencil is very dark, so it's a bummer. I try to get rid of the lines as we go along with the painting, and I fail um, miserably. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, so now I'm just getting my paint together. And what I'm using today is just two, well, three uh, different paints. I'm using Lunar Black. Uh, for my trees mixed with indigo but I'm using indigo blue for the actual um, sky and moon and all of that I did throw in a little in Danthrone to just brighten it up a bit but you don't need to do that at all and then I have some white gouache for the snow um, and that's really about it so now I'm just gonna wet my paper around the moon and down to where the snow will be on the snowbank and um, I'm going to go ahead, my, my uh, brush is a little dirty because I had already mixed my indigo. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what I plan to do is make it darker along the edges and then on the area closest to the moon it will be a little bit brighter. So what's going on with me? Hmm. Well, uh, as you all know, I had my back surgery done on October 18th, and uh, I am healing. I'm getting there. Uh, my back feels amazing. Uh, my spine, it is completely, well, not completely, but it is healing very well. 
and I'm very happy with how everything turned out. I have no more of that pain that's keeping me bent over and unable to stand up and walk. I can walk long distances. I was up to about a mile walking and then something happened. My pain got really bad and we couldn't figure out what it was. And then I said to my doctor, I think it's my SI joints. It's not on my spine, it's next to my spine. And the SI joints are the sacroiliac joints that hold the the iliac bones, your pelvis bones to your spine. They're very narrow joints. And with ankylosing spondylitis, they get attacked very hard for some reason. So I think that's what my problem is, but my pain was so bad and I couldn't take my NSAID, which is day pro. Uh, I took that twice a day before surgery, but NSAIDs apparently uh, inhibit bone growth. So normally you would be off of it after surgery. Uh, I was off of it for a few weeks before, and then I'm supposed to be off of it for three months post-op. I didn't make it. He ended up putting me on prednisone, and that helped my pain tremendously. But then all of a sudden, uh, as I was weaning down off of the dose pack, which is only like five or six days long, it was coming back after three days. So I texted my surgeon again and I'm like, hey, can I go back on my NSAID? Because I think that would help me. And sure enough, it did. It took my pain way down to a tolerable level. But then I did something in bed, which is going to sound very bizarre. Um, I, (laughs) I was laying on my right side. My husband was behind me laying and my feet were cold. So I bent my legs up and I kept pushing back toward him to try to suck some body heat off of him. And in doing that, it arched my back and messed up my SI joints big time. So then I was back to all the pain again. The other problem was that I ran out of one of my medications, which is gabapentin or Neurontin. They now have it as a controlled substance, but it is not a narcotic. It is... um, Uh, seizure medication, which they use for nerve pain, but apparently people in prison were using it to get high and they were shooting up with it. Very dangerous. And in doing so, they had to make it a controlled substance to stop that from happening. So again, us people with chronic pain are paying the price for that, which is ridiculous. It's not even a narcotic. But in the meantime, I ran out of medication about six days before my refill date. And they wouldn't refill it because they said it was too early. And I thought, too early? I'm out of meds. How can it be too early? Now I'm putting down heavy salt, which is going to make the um, snow way too big. I should have used table salt instead. These grains are very large, as you can see. So anyway, back to the story. I... um, I ran out of the medication, and they're like, well, unless your doctor calls in another prescription, or not calls in, sends in another prescription, you can't get it filled. And even if he does, he's going to have to increase the frequency so that it'll be covered. And I thought, oh, for goodness sakes, this is so ridiculous. And I had just had a telemed appointment with my pain doctor that morning, and this happened right after I got done with my appointment. I was so angry. The other thing was, is I was in the hospital for four days, And they were giving me my medication, so I wasn't using my home medication. So in all, I was about 10 or 11 days short of my medication. Oh, it just started to snow. Um, And that's impossible. It's just my husband and I. Nobody's going to steal it. It's not even a narcotic, and you're not going to get high on it. Uh, If anything, you'll take a nap. But somebody miscounted my pills. And when I said, I think somebody must have miscounted, oh, no, that couldn't have happened. We count it twice. And I thought, yeah, on a busy day, I'll bet you do. So anyway, they, um, my doctor did finally get the prescription sent in. But in doing that, I had to go to a funeral. My best friend's father died, and the funeral was on Tuesday, I believe. And that was two days, two and a half days without my medication now, waiting on this to be filled. By then, my blood level had dropped. Within a week, it would be completely cleared from your system. So it had dropped dramatically, and I was near tears at church. I could hardly stand it. And then we went to the luncheon afterwards, and I was sitting on one of those, 
you know, metal folding chairs. Oh, dear God. It was so painful. I could hardly eat anything. I love some sweets, and I did not even get a sweet. I mean, it was that bad. And we had to tell our friends, sorry, we got to go. And we left. And I felt so bad because my girlfriend wanted us to come over and party with them at her dad's house and everybody have a celebration. Well, it ended up nobody came. Uh, it was such a long day. And then they had the private burial between the luncheon and when they were going to have this party. And it was almost two hours from our house. So it was just a long day and I could barely stand it getting home. I was taking pain medication again, which I had stopped and I was back to taking it and I was, I was miserable. It wasn't even touching it. So they were filling the prescription as we were driving home and I finally got my prescription <laughs> filled and was able to take the medication and within hours I was feeling better. So that meant that I could come out to my studio. And then I tried to paint yesterday and it turned to S-H-I-T. Um, so I did not film that and ended up cleaning my studio instead, as you saw. Um, so today is really my first time painting. And as you can see, I've got those huge blotches there. Most of them are gonna disappear completely because I'm gonna have pine trees, snowy pines in front of it and it, they'll just disappear. Some of them are gonna show, but that's okay. It kinda adds something, I think, to the painting, and you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Right now I'm trying to add some white gouache around the edges of this moon to get rid of my pencil lines. I'm obsessed with it, and it's driving me nuts. And don't worry if your moon isn't exactly round. First of all, we aren't perfect, artists are not perfect, and they always are a little bit off. If you examine somebody's paintings close enough, a, an excellent artist, you will find that there are imperfections, shakiness, whatever there is in their paintings. So don't worry about it. Don't get obsessed over that. Um, plus, your trees are going to cover part of the moon. So if you have a mistake, just put a tall tree there along the edge of the moon, and it'll hide your mistake. Very, very simple. Now, wetting that moon was helpful because um, putting in the little um, craters and stuff in the moon, the darkened areas, uh, those are going to fade out as the paint dries, of course. So, um, yeah, so that was my story, and I'm glad that it's over. I've been practicing my harp. I had not been painting because my pain was too uncontrolled, but now that I'm feeling better, I'm sitting in my chair at my table, and I'm feeling great right now. Um, I do still have to take some pain medication, and my hope was to get off of everything eventually, and I still hope for that, but I do have autoimmune arthritis. Ankylosing spondylitis would be in comparison to rheumatoid, only it attacks the joints differently, basically. So um, I may be on pain medication forever. I don't know. I was hoping I wouldn't have to be. But as long as I can have a quality of life, that is what is important to me. And, yeah, so that's pretty much, that's it. Now these trees that I'm putting in, uh, right now I'm just using indigo um, and then I'm gonna go in and do a big tree but the big tree on the right I'm starting out with indigo and it's not going to be super dark as it dries then after I get done with it I'm gonna go ahead back in with lunar black mixed with my indigo in order to make the trees look a little more layered um, with branches that might be hitting the light a little bit versus branches that are buried and aren't getting any light. Uh, so that's, that's my plan. Right now this is looking dark, but it's going to dry much lighter, and then um, I'll go back in later. Now your trees don't have to be perfect either because you're going to be adding snow on top of them and filling in any gaps or things that you're not happy with. You can just cover it up with snow. Uh, I decided to try using a... Um, script liner to put my branches in and I thought why am I doing this after I get done with it I think well that was silly and I go back to my big brush anyway and change it all up 
So then I'm still going along with the script liner, but pretty quickly here, I'm going to switch back to, I believe it's a number eight. What did I use here? A number eight. Um, it's my number eight Da Vinci Maestro brush that I love. It's like my favorite brush of all time, but oh, I guess I'm not done with the liner yet. I'll be switching as I get closer to the bottom of the tree here. So what else is going on in my world? Um, oh, Diesel. Last I spoke to you, I was very concerned about him because his liver enzymes were sky high. I don't know if you remember that. And we had taken him to a specialist who was about two hours from our home. Uh, she was a liver specialist, veterinarian. And we went to see her and we started on some medication and our vet decided to keep us on the same medication and he went back for um, some blood work and they tested his blood and his liver enzymes had returned to absolute normal. They went from 600 and something back down to 30. I mean, it was amazing. So he's continuing on this medication. He's got a lot of sludge in his gallbladder, which starts before gallstones. And so we're just keeping on him on that medication in order to prevent him from getting gallstones or being in pain. He will be 13 years old in March, and he is still going strong. He sleeps a lot more like an older dog, but he still runs and plays with toys and has a blast. So um, he can't jump up on beds anymore. We have to lift him and that kind of thing. But otherwise, he's doing great, and Santa has treated him very nice. So he's going to be happy this year because <laughs> I bought him these gifts he has this favorite elephant toy. He likes his Mr. Bill toys too, but I got him this elephant and he started loving on this elephant and he's loved it to death. So I thought I'll get him a new one. Well, this one came and it was microscopically small and I thought that isn't what I had before. So I sent it back and I got a bigger one. Well, the bigger one came also with a giant pink flamingo, which he got, but he could smell them in the box. So I had to hide the box. So I gave it to Pat. I said, hide it somewhere. This was before my surgery. I couldn't be running around hiding things. So I told Pat, please just hide it. Well, we couldn't find it. So I, Pat went out and bought him new toys and got him a bunny rabbit and something else. And I said, you know, we're going to find his toys now as soon as I uh, wrap this up. And sure enough, popped up. It was out in the garage up on a shelf where Diesel would never see it or smell it. So he's got like four stuffed animals for Christmas, plus all of his favorite dog biscuits he gets to open and mow down on those until he's roly-poly huge. Um, and that is his Christmas. So we had our family Christmas last weekend. Oh, a uh, little interruption here. You can see that I, after adding the lunar black into the indigo how much darker the tree is trees are so I eventually after the one on the right is dry I will go back in and I will deepen some of the branches and leave some of them lighter um, but anyway this last weekend was our family Christmas and um, that was a lot of fun a lot of us were wearing masks I had a mask on the whole night and so did my nephew, who's sick with AML, and a couple other people in my family, one who has psoriatic arthritis, which is like my arthritis, and um, although that's not exactly the same, and a couple other people. So we all had masks on, and many of the people who, who uh, were concerned about us had masks on. So it was a pretty healthy party, and nobody was sick. Um, and we were hoping, against hope, that my one son and his partner would be coming. I had been in contact with his partner, and he said, Justin really wants to come to the Christmas party. And I thought, oh, yay. So driving down there, I was a nervous wreck. I was having anxiety attacks, basically, like I was going on a first date or something. I had butterflies in my stomach. It was craziness. And I was so excited because I couldn't wait to see him and just wrap my arms around him and give him a big hug. But by the time 8.30 p.m. rolled around, I realized that my son wasn't going to be coming. So then I was let down, and it hurt pretty bad. I sent him a message the other day and invited him to come to our home for Christmas this year, like 
is tradition, but um, never got a response. Uh, so I don't think we'll be seeing him. But my other son and his fiance are coming, and um, we're excited about that. We've been planning for their wedding, which is in August uh, next summer, and we're excited for that. Uh, it's it's so much fun, all the planning and everything. And it's so much fun to be included, even, you know, as mother of the groom rather than the bride. She's just so special. She's a sweetheart. Uh, so now I've got my work cut out for me for this wedding. I wanted to get my weight back down once I was able to start walking again. And then, of course, with this backslide with my SI joint pain, um, that has kind of inhibited my aerobic activity somewhat. Now, yesterday I didn't go for a walk, but I spent the whole time cleaning and in my studio and bending and lifting and all this stuff. So I just called that my exercise for the day because I didn't want to be up all night in pain. Um, but I do have to get out and take a walk today. Now it's snowing, so it's going to be slippery on the roads. But uh, we found a couple gyms that we can go to locally here. I have this silver sneakers thing through Medicare, so one of the gyms I can attend for free. I'd only have to pay for any classes I wanted to join. And then there's another one, uh, this big state-of-the-art place that was built near a local high school that we can go to. Once I turn 65, which is five years from now for me, um, then I can go for $1 a day. But right now, I think it's $8 a day. So, But that's not too bad. I can buy a monthly membership for like $48, or I can spend $8 each time I go. So we'll see. But that gives me a track to walk on and a lot of equipment to use and that kind of thing. So we intend to get back into shape, which is really important to me. I, I just want to get back to healthy again. It's a strong fight for me. My weight never used to be a huge problem. Um, but now I'm on so many medications that cause weight gain that it's a struggle to get it back down. So I'll just keep struggling away because I want to look good for the wedding. And um, yeah, so that's that. We're excited about it. Uh, Monica's... Oh, Sorry. Monica's been trying dresses on, bridal dresses on, which is really nice. And she's been including me in the planning, which is really nice. I appreciate that. And I was hoping to get good enough on my harp to play at my church this Christmas, but I wasn't there yet. So next Christmas, for sure, I'm going to be back to it. Uh, I could have played my flute this year, but um, honestly, our church's music is lacking considerably, and God bless them. They do the best they can. They have an old lady who is the organist, and we have a priest who loves to sing everything very slow, whether it's happy or sad. So um, I'm hoping that in time I can help evolve and change that a little bit, but um, we've been getting more involved <laughs> in our church so that we can, um, you know, maybe then as people get to know me, they'll be more apt to listen to some suggestions because I don't want to step on any toes. But I came from a place that had a terrific music ministry to a place that doesn't. So it's, it's a struggle for me every week when I go to church. But while well, we're coming to the end here, I'm just quickly putting this down. It, that was the indigo again. And now I'm going to go back in again with the black mixed with indigo, darker. And then I will start with the snow. Um, oh, tea break here for a second. Now, I am going to go over this tree on the left with the lunar black mixed with indigo. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some faded out trees into the background a little more so they look like they're in the snow as we put the snow on. And now I'm going to put some shadowing on the snow in the foreground. Uh, here, I think I used some indanthrone blue. Uh, that's going to be covered, what I'm lifting there right now. It will be covered later, but uh, I decided to go in and use some indanthrone blue, which is a little less black-ish, so um, it shines on the snow a little bit better. And I'm going ahead and wetting my moon again so I can add more cratering into the moon. And that will help it 
I'm just dabbing on some of that same Indanthron blue. You can use the indigo. It's not a big deal. It was just on my brush. And um, that will just kind of spread, and it'll look a lot better than when we're done here. Here I'm in, adding on just a little bit of shadowing from the trees where the moon would be shining over them. And uh, I'm keeping those shadows fairly short, but just here and there. And then it's time to start adding snow. What am I doing? Oh, I'm just spreading the color out a little bit. And then we'll start with the snow. And for the snow today, I'm just using white gouache. Uh, a lot of times I like to use that um, white ink, uh, that Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martin. Um, that is an excellent ink to be using. Uh oh, it looks like mine may have dried but I think I can just reconstitute it with some water. Let's have to see here. Oh yeah, wow, it crystallized and dried. Very interesting. I haven't used it since last year, so I will have to try to reconstitute it. If not, I'll have to buy another bottle. I love that stuff, because it's even whiter than washes. It doesn't fade like wash fades. Here, the white that I'm using has a little bit of blue mixed into it so that it's not actually white. It's uh, a little bit faded and more bluish. And then I'm going to go back on top of these uh, local or foreground trees later with whiter gouache. You can kind of tell it's blue there at the bottom left where I put it on. You see in comparison to the paper how blue it actually is. But then, after I'm done, I will go ahead and put white on all of the trees. Now I'm going back in with the white gouache without any blue on it, and I'm adding that to the branches, especially the ones that are facing the moon. And eventually, as I get down to the bottom, I won't be putting the white so much on the left, as, or on the right, as I do on the left. Now here I'm just using white gouache and I'm sprinkling on with this plastic brush on the end of this eraser. Um, it works out really well, although it's getting kind of flimsy because I've been using it for so many years that it's not as good as it used to be. I may have to go back to a toothbrush, but um, the cheaper the toothbrush, the better it is. Uh, it seems to work better. I don't know why that is. I guess maybe the bristles are stiffer or something like that. Now I'm just going to go in with a brush and add some larger flakes with the tip of the brush and some white gouache. Okay, so that was just a very simple painting, something to just get my feet wet, so to speak, or my fingers wet, so to speak. And it turned out okay. I mean, for my, my actual first painting since I've come back, I thought this would be a good um, tutorial for some of you. Now what I did here with the salt, I used large grain salt. This was salt from a doodle and sketch box that I had from many, many years ago. Um, I mean, it's not even in English. I think that says salt, but um, 
it's very, very large grain, very large grains. You can see them on my fingertips. They're, they're big. So um, that's why those speckles got so huge. So if you do salt, um, you can use very fine salt and just sprinkle it sparingly so you don't get big lumps in certain places. That really took to the paper and sucked up all my indigo blue. So, but it's okay. You know, it's fun and it was something to do and it's in my sketchbook, no big deal. So um, anyway, I just wanted to get a video in before Christmas and before the end of the year. Hopefully I can do it again and um, want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas or Happy Holiday season and a very blessed New Year, healthy, healthy New Year. Um, right now, my nephew is going through his cancer again. It just came back. He just found out this week. And he needs a bone marrow transplant, but they can't do it because it's too dangerous with COVID. So <clears throat> if you can keep my nephew in your prayers, I'm not going to tell his name because I want to keep things a little private anyway. But um, it has us all very concerned. And he will be undergoing chemo through the holidays. Hopefully he'll be home for Christmas. But if not, they can celebrate Christmas late, I suppose. Um, I'm just very concerned about him. He's in his, probably, he's probably about 39 years old, I believe. I don't think he's 40 yet, but um, yeah, he could use some prayers. So keep him in your prayers, and thank you for keeping me in your prayers all this time. I am doing considerably better and I'm very happy. So uh, I'm gonna keep painting and hopefully I can get my painting uh, fingers back in check so that I can do some more, uh, at least some demonstrations with some more difficult work coming up very soon. So everybody remember, be courageous. I'm sorry, we're crooked. Be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care, God bless you, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.